It's Friday, January 22nd. Let's play the booster box game. Box number one. Can we get a hundred dollars? How does this game work? I'm about to crack open a booster box within 24 hours of release and immediately try and sell the cards of value by listing them on eBay for the lowest buy it now price. If I can sell $100 worth of rares and mythics, I will take that money and go immediately down to my local game store where I will buy a second box. I will then crack open that box and see if I can get $100 in rares and mythics. And I will keep doing this process until I crack open a box that does not contain $100 in rares and mythics. It's the booster box game. Will I crack open five boxes or only one? Let's find out. As with Battle for Zendikar, any expedition that I crack will count towards that box's total. Now I'll only be showing you the rares, mythics, and foils from the box. Prices shown are the eBay buy it now lowest available price at the time of selling, except for cards worth less than $3. For all cards worth less than $3 each, I will show you the TCG mid price. Nobody is going to want those $1 or $2 jank rares and mythics. And even if they did, given shipping and eBay seller fees, there wouldn't be any point in selling them anyway. So we're looking for at least cards worth $3 or more.
Well, that foil Chandra sure helped us out. Take a moment to realize that if it had not been for that foil Chandra, this box's value would have been about $70. Even so, at $107 and change, shipping and fees on so many cards that need to be sold makes this a little tricky. For any card worth over $10, I have to send that card with confirmation delivery. Or the risk is too great that the mail will supposedly lose my foil Chandra. Now, for the cards worth less than $10, I'm willing to send them out without delivery confirmation, which means pretty much just a stamp. I'm still going to have to combine the quagmire and the spires and the fumarole in the plains, as well as the Thought Not Seer and Kozilek's return as multi-item listings, as this helps save on shipping costs too. So that's 10 cards out of the box that I sold in order to replenish the cost of the box. I could stop right now and essentially have gotten a free booster box, but that wouldn't be any fun. It's the booster box game. Let's play another round. It's Tuesday, January 26th. All cards are sold. Usually I like to have this done by Monday, but it took me to Tuesday to get them all sold at the prices that I listed. Nonetheless, all cards are sold and I am on my way to the local game store to pick up another box. Remember, in the few days since launch, prices have changed dramatically. Let's see if we make it to a third.
Oh, so close. It's too bad Kozilek's return had dropped so dramatically. I suppose people had higher expectations for it? Nonetheless, even if I sold every rare and mythic worth more than $3 in this box, I still wouldn't have the $100 to buy a new box, let alone the ability to cover shipping and fees. And still no expedition. Well, they pretty much are one per case. So while some people win big, in the end, the real winner is always the house. Remember, the point of the Booster Box game is not for me to encourage you to play, but rather for me to discourage you to play, and instead remind you that the best use of your money is to buy the singles you need, unless of course you plan to draft. Buying a Booster Box does not get you what you need for your constructed deck, and as you can see, it seldom even gets its own value back. Will prices have changed after a few weeks of the Pro Tour? We'll find out when we do the Booster Box game again.